And good morning everybody, I'm at the EKZ gravel race and I'm getting ready to get my bike out of the back. Getting ready to uh, get myself all prepared. I have my bike computer, my, light, my uh, sorry not lights, uh, glasses. So uh, it's raining quite a bit. It's supposed to stop around 12.30 and we're starting at 12.15 so, and it's been raining all night last night. So it's gonna be a wet, wet race. Um, anyway, I'm getting ready to go get my number stuff like that my strategy for the race today will be to uh, definitely take it easy and just try to have some fun see what see what happens hey everybody what's up and welcome back to the shop today we're going to do a race review video from the ekz uh, gravel race i did a few weeks ago let's jump right into it because it's kind of a long video here i am waiting in line getting ready to get my number i'm already getting kind of nervous because i know i'm gonna have to speak with these people in german and i'm not very good at speaking with people in german so here i am getting my number I think she's understanding me. Yep, she nodded her head. She understands me. <laughs> so I got my number. They gave me some socks also, which I went ahead and tried to put on. All right, here we are about to start. I guess it's about five, 10 minutes before we start. I'm putting myself nicely in the back. Here we go. And I'm just kind of looking around. You can see there's quite a few other racers here today. I wanted to start off like nearly in the back because basically I'm not in very good shape right now at the time of this race or right now and uh, I knew I wouldn't be passing that many people and so I wanted to be kind of towards the back but unfortunately I got there a little bit early and so like quite a few people piled in behind me and I couldn't really get any further back so but it wasn't too bad I was still like maybe 75% towards the back. All right and here the race is starting. Um, as expected, some of the folks are passing me, but I'm actually passing some of the people here as well. It was raining a little bit at the start. It had been raining for days, I think, before the race, so it was going to be really wet. I knew that. And as you can see, I'm on my old mountain bike. That's, that's my 1995, my 1995 GT bike. So I'm probably the only person in the whole race actually on a quill stem. And you can see right here, it got really bunched up and everybody who was like towards the middle of the race was just at this point kind of walking. So yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but there's nothing you can do about that. I figured at this point, I would just try to like relax and not worry about it because I'd have plenty of time to it's a 50 kilometer race with, I guess, 850, 900 meters of climbing. So I knew it was gonna be like a two hour, three hour, something like that, maybe three hour race. So I wasn't in a hurry. I knew I'd have plenty of time to exert all the energy I wanted later. So here I was just kind of relaxing and just walking. As you can see, it is extremely muddy. Yeah, it was a mess. There were other, um, racers that have already been on this course like the actual cyclocross racers i don't know like the juniors and other categories had already uh raced here so the the course was totally muddy and ruddy as you can see uh right here in the video actually for me it was even kind of like hard to i mean this part wasn't bad but there's parts of it that it was hard just to not fall off the bike and just like slip out all over the place i was just trying to find some ruts and stay in them and just keep going but I did have the right bike, I guess. I had, you know, a mountain bike, whereas you can see some other folks do have mountain bikes, like that guy right there that just passed me, but probably the majority of the folks had, um, you know, uh, gravel bikes and stuff like that. Drop bar bikes with uh, thinner, skinnier uh, tires. So I think I had a pretty good bike for it. It's just really slow going here, and I wasn't really in too big of a hurry, although I don't know why that guy was nearly stopping, so I was going to try to pass him, but then when I tried to go around him, he started going forward again. No big deal. I was just trying to get through this muddy part and get, you know, get out of this muddy part. Then I could figure I could actually start, you know, riding properly and putting some, some uh, effort into it. At this point, I'm just kind of, I mean, I'm not doing nothing, but I'm not riding super hard either. I'm just trying to conserve my energy and get through this uh, nasty part. Here's another traffic jam. It actually, the, this mud doesn't look as bad on the video as it felt like it was in real life. Like it felt like in real life it was like so difficult to ride in and I was just slipping everywhere. Everybody was slipping everywhere. But watching the video, it kind of doesn't look that bad. Um, but I can assure you it's worse in real life than it looks here. 
And I did have my um, SPD 520 uh, clipless pedals on. So, you know, it wasn't like I could just like s take my feet off easily and just like slide down some of these hills. I actually, you know, had to clip in, clip out if I needed to do that, which I did plenty of times. I think they were the right choice, actually, in the end. It was kind of difficult on this really muddy part, having to clip in and out a lot and whatnot, but uh, it was such a long ride, it felt pretty nice to have my feet locked in, not having to worry about them slipping or moving um, later on in the, the race. I have no idea what position I am in right here. I'm sure pretty far back, probably uh, around 75% in the back. Most of the people back here were, you know, pretty chilled out. Like people in this kind of section of the race aren't, you know, too worried about it. They're they're not planning on winning the race or winning their category or anything like that. Everybody at this point is just kind of trying to ride the race and just have fun. Um, yeah, it, it, the ones in the front are the ones that are really, you know, going hard at it. Hey. This part doesn't look that steep, but actually it was, and my feet were just slipping all over the place. My shoes actually are pretty worn out. My decathlon you know tennis shoes slash bike shoes so they were just like totally slipping i was literally having to stick my toe into the into the mud just to get enough grip to to get up that hill gopro stop recording this is once we kind of got out of the the beginning area and we're actually getting into the woods nice little downhill section here i mean and then just right back up to some stairs there were so many situations like this where we would go up and down up and down uh, then some stairs There were some sections that were kind of quick like this. Uh, I think there were some faster sections even than this one. I guess I never made it over like 40 kilometers an hour on any of these single tracks. Um, yeah, and one thing I, that happened maybe around here, I think I, it just um, just reminded me watching the video is, especially my back brake was like getting way out of adjustment. I was nearly having to completely just squeeze tight to stop the thing at all. So basically my back brake wasn't working too well. The front one was also slipping. So my brakes were really not well. I, I guess I didn't, thing is, is I adjusted everything, you know, shortly before this race. And I, I think I just had it adjusted a little bit wrong. Some of these parts look pretty simple, but when I was there, I was taking it pretty cautious. And I kept on thinking in my mind, uh, this is a long race, so there's no reason to try blasting down any of these technical sections because if I crash out, then it's going to be, you know, not worth it. It may take me a couple extra seconds going down these sections slower, but at least I won't crash and get hurt and have to, like, walk back home or something. I don't even know how I would have got back uh, if I would have crashed because, you know, it's like 25 kilometers out, 25 kilometers back. Um, definitely don't want to, to crash. So took a pretty easy on the downhill sections. Plus I'm not all, all that used to this bike. I mean, I rode it to work and back a few times. I've done a, a couple little gravel rides here and there, but I don't have that many kilometers on the bike, so I'm not super comfortable with it. And just to remind you, it has no front suspension, so it's a fully solid mountain bike, fully rigid mountain bike. There were a couple sections like this where we were like going under bridges and, and there was like stairs we had to climb up. Now at this point you can see it's starting to get more cleared out, like there's you're not, there's no really no traffic, there's a couple Whoa. people I'm passing, a couple people are passing me, but there's not much traffic anymore at this point. Here was one of the first like aid stations, I guess, they had, I, I guess aid, but they definitely had some food and water and stuff. I think I just topped off my water bottle at this point, yeah here, I just topped off my water bottle and continued on. I think they also had bike mechanics there, so if you had like mechanical problems. See. But I didn't really want to waste time on it, even though my brakes were not stopping that well. I felt that it didn't really matter that much, that for the most part I could just, um, you know, take it a little bit easy and just, I don't know, I just didn't feel like stopping and asking the guy to adjust my brakes. Heck, I could have done it myself. As you can see here, I have the, uh, the Shinran Technologies uh, bike computer, and that bike computer lasts so long, like the battery life is so long, I just left the, the uh, like Indiglo backlight on the whole time, and that worked perfectly fine. There were a number of uh, bridges, like this one coming up, and I'm really glad that I turned my GoPro on right here, because this is probably like the most significant situation of the whole entire race, 
basically I, I was thinking in my head like on all these wet bridges like okay I got to get really easy on these wet bridges it's been raining a long time this wood is wet you know it's going to be super slick but I remember thinking like okay take it easy here comes a bridge this looks like a pretty simple approach no big deal but whoops <laughs> yep I crashed and it actually uh, was probably a harder crash than it looks here it is in slow motion Boom. <laughs> anyway, it actually was a harder crash than I think it looks. I did hit my helmet quite hard and it was kind of shook my head up a little bit. Uh, hit my hip pretty hard on the ground. I didn't notice the hip pain that much at the beginning when I first stood up, but um, yeah, my head had been hit pretty hard. So I just was like gonna stand there for a minute and get my bearings again and then continue on and take it easy. And that's exactly what I did. Whoa. Did you guys see that? Woo! All right. I guess my, I guess my helmet's okay. The bike itself was okay, except for the handlebars got twisted a little bit. You can see I'm straightening it up right here. I went on to ride a bit, and then I realized that it was not straight again, so I had to stop again, straighten it up further, and continue on. Other than that, the bike was totally fine. From that point on, I did slow down quite a bit because. I didn't want to crash again and I still kind of, my, my head didn't hurt, but it, I could feel that it had been hit. So I was kind of like riding 80% speed from that point on. Plus I still had a long way to go and I knew that I need to preserve my energy. I need not to crash anymore. I just need to finish this ride. At this point I was like, I just want to just consider this like a normal ride, not really a race anymore. First of all, there was almost nobody around at that point. Like I hardly was seeing any more ra racers. So I was like, okay, this is just a normal ride. Just follow the flags and have fun. And that's exactly what I did. Even though it's only 50 kilometers, which isn't really that far, I was getting pretty tired. I hadn't done 50 kilometers in this type of elevation gain uh, in quite a while. So by the like 40 kilometer mark, I was getting pretty darn tired, like not cramp tired, but I was like feeling like cramps were going to be coming pretty soon to my legs. So yeah, it was getting, it was getting tough. Then towards the end, they, I didn't unfortunately get to record it because my GoPro died. But towards the end, they just had this like super steep, I don't know, must take about 15 minutes to hike up, carry your bike on you, or just like bring it up and hit the brakes. I was so exhausted. This was like probably in the last 30 minutes of the race. And that was really killer. I don't know how everybody else felt about that in the race, but my God, I almost felt like I couldn't do this. It was like, I mean, I knew I could do it, but it was just so slow. I was going so slow. My legs were just so sore at that point. I, I was like, man, I wish I would have uh, trained a little bit more for this because my legs were beat and I was carrying this heavy, muddy bike. My shoes were pretty much soaked. Everything was soaked. Um, that was really like a dark point in the race just to like try to keep up a decent pace. And uh, yeah, that, that last ramp was super hard. Um, after that, it was pretty easy. It was just like normal stuff. But like I said, unfortunately, my GoPro didn't last the whole time. Okay, we're about 30 kilometers in. That means well over halfway. Another 20 to go. I'm one hour and 54 minutes in. I know there's a very difficult little climb coming up. And when I say climb, I mean climb with your, with your feet. It's like some stairs. So, a little bit saving my energy for that piece. I think I feel fully recovered from the crash. My head doesn't really hurt. So even though I missed about like the last 30% or, or roughly 30%, uh, this is a recreation of what it might have looked like when I finished. Here I come, pretty happy, number one position. No, I'm just kidding. That's the uh, professionals that race the next day on Sunday. That was the winner from from that race. But anyway, that was the race. I mean, it was just a super muddy uh, gravel race. What, what else can you say about it? My bike, the uh, classic uh, bike did pretty well. I didn't do that well. Actually, I don't remember what position I was in. Honestly, it was a few weeks ago, but it was towards the back. Let's just say that it was, it was probably in the 75 plus percentile. So not like a good performance by any means. And Maybe if I wouldn't have crashed, maybe if I didn't have such a heavy bike, maybe my shoes weren't soaked, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I would have done a little bit better, but you know, it is what it is. 
Um, but I was just there to have fun. That's how I, I do these races. I'm not uh, that competitive. I'm just out there trying to have fun. And honestly, it is fun. It, it's, it's painful, but it's fun at the same time. It's like, it's hard to describe. Um, but I really like bike racing, even though I'm not fast or really that competitive. It's just fun being amongst all the other racers and just seeing how you can do, see how you are against uh, all these other people. Anyway, I'm rambling now. That was pretty much the race. That's all I have to say about it. It was super tough. I think it took me like three hours, 15 minutes, something like that to finish. Uh, it was cold. It was rainy most of the time. And uh, the bike itself did really good though, other than the brakes, which isn't the bike's fault. That's just a matter of adjustment. So if you're wondering, yes, you can gravel race on a classic mountain bike. It'll work just fine. But uh, I did talk to a couple of people and I told them like, I guess this bike probably weighs 13 to 14 kilograms. I don't have a scale. I haven't really weighed it properly yet, but I'm just guessing it's like 13, 14 plus kilograms it is all steel. So you're going to probably be at like a three, you know, kilogram disadvantage compared to all the other people. So other than the weight disadvantage and maybe a little bit worse braking than some of the newer uh, modern gravel bikes, other than that, you know, if you just want to go into a race and have fun, bike like this is perfectly capable. No question. It'll do it. You know, did it 20 years ago. It'll do it today. So <laughs> anyway, I guess I'm rambling again. So that was pretty much our race. Uh, I did have, I did have a lot of fun on it. If you have any questions about the race, if you want to know anything about gravel racing or this bike, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.